Okay. Okay. You know what? I just noticed a big flaw in my plan. I'm not sure if I can actually see if people watching or anything because I've never really streamed to Twitch before. So let me open up one of these. Let me make that a little bit smaller. If anyone's already here and watching live, hi. This isn't at all embarrassing. This is what I do every... Wow, it's Monday night. That's what I do every Monday night. Experiment with platforms I've never experimented with before. Oh, there we go. Share things to strange. Stream preview, live. Hey, there we go. Am I live? I am live. Awesome. I recommended changes. It gives me recommended changes. Put that edit stream info. It's very scary. I have 11 views, but I'm sure it's just people coming by and saying, oh, there's nothing to see. I'll walk away and never come back. <laughs> okay, so I decided that I need some sort of a gimmick, right? Because everyone online has a gimmick. So I thought I should start playing. Down in the computer. Hmm. Oh, it didn't like that. Headphones. And I'm not going to like that. That's too bad. Okay, so anyway, I decided I needed some sort of a gimmick. And I still don't know what my gimmick is. I saw one girl, she has cross stitches. And all you see is just the thing she's cross stitching. I'm like, that's really neat. And other people like the game. But I don't play popular games because I'm not a popular person. So I can't really do any of the Fortnite or the Overwatches or the... Legends. So I'm going to play something that no one else is playing, which is Siberia, and it's actually one of my quarantine goals that I haven't gotten to yet. I want to play the whole Siberia series. I played Siberia once. I remember about 15 years ago, I went to Best Buy, and it was in the bargain bin because no one even wanted it back then. But it looked really awesome and mysterious and had this like old, almost romantic feel to it of something forgotten but worth playing and I had a lot of fun and I definitely never had to consult any guides on how to solve the problem. Oh, I have a viewer. Thank you. Hi. So now I'm going to actually kick off another quarantine goal and actually play through the series. Oh, also the main character's of name Kate. So that works out well. So I wonder if I count as the one viewer. It has that sad
a lawyer, I could have traveled the world looking for a exclusive toy factory owner. <laughs> Oh, hey, guess it's time to start my game. I thought I saw it glowing. Oh, I can take some. I love brochures. What is there to see in town? Welcome to Vadeline, the world capital of mechanical toys. Let yourself be transported by the magnificent landscape surrounding Valdeline, a small, charming town tucked away in the Alps, and by Vorblerg Manufacturing, whose exceptional savoir-faire in the specialized world of luxury mechanical toys and automatons is at the root of Valdeline's reputation around the world. It must be a very small reputation. I haven't heard of them. For only 800 years, sorry, for 800 years, the Vorablerg family has passed its knowledge from generation to generation, perfecting the art of that particular branch of clockmaking that breathes life into the complex network of cogs and spindles that make up automaton. Its creative wonders once defiled, defied, not defiled, defied belief and drew the admiration of young and old alike. People would come from across Europe for a chance to vie for the right to own one of these fantastic toys. Unequaled Savathir. At the heart of a mechanical automaton is its motor. A series of spindles are set in motion to music via a set of cogs. Attached to the spindles are cams that are shaped in the image of the music. In turn, they command a series of rods which control the gestures of the toy at their tips. So, a self-playing piano. Uh, this goes on for a bit. Construction takes place in three stages, modeling, mechanics, and casting. You can't cast an ugly person for a robot. The process requires the participation of 20 specialized trades. In its heyday, the Volkberg factory employed over 100 craftsmen, mechanics, watchmakers, sculptors, tailors, dressmakers, working in separate workshops. Volkberg automatons all have two distinguishing features in common. Their high precision mechanics, mechanisms, and characteristic and the characteristic Volberg wind-up key. Yeah, I'm making so many mistakes. I said, I guess there goes all hopes I have of, you know, a fascinating, what's that called? Fascinating uh, voice acting career. Devising and assembling each model is a meticulous process. Standard toys are constructed from local wood, while the most sophisticated ones use much more precious resources, such as ebony imported from Madagascar. Despite competition from Asia, the Volberg never gave in to the temptation to produce electrical robots and chose to continue their exploration of the mysteries of perpetual mechanical motion. And I'm guessing that's why the factory got sold out. Volbergs have come a long way, come a long way, Volbergs, from their simple jointed bits of yesteryear. Today, their creations are so lifelike that one has the impression they can think for themselves. They have that impression. The first signs of puppet manufacture in Valdeline go back to the 13th century. While there was maybe no definite puppet industry at the time, Hermann Wahlberg's renown was recognized even in the court of the emperor. Huh. Man, I wonder if that's a real copyright. I definitely don't think that's a correct uh, description at the bottom. Is this a brochure? This, this looks like a trifold brochure, but it's got pages. This is magical already. It was not until the 17th century that Charles Vorleberg founded the Volberg Mechanical Toy and Puppet Factory. Industrial activity in the valley really took off. The reputation of Valadeline, I think I've, that's probably the fourth way I've said it now, and its famous toys then just kept growing and growing. Charles Wolberg was one of his creations. A large part of production was devoted to producing theatrical puppets at the time. Okay, that one, this one is definitely made for the game. That one again is, I wonder if that's legit. 
The turn of the 20th century was Vaseline's golden age, as expressed in the factories, impressive architecture, and the main houses of the town. The Wahlberg reputation crossed the ocean, smashing its fine precision mechanisms across the globe to delighted buyers who began to, to believe that Wahlberg automatons had a life of their own. Like their own families, their own kids, their own jobs, yeah. their own taxes. And there's Rudolf Wahlberg, who managed the business during the glory years of the Wahlberg factory. From the private collection. 1949 looks like he died. 1881 to 1949. Since the end of the Second World War, the destiny of the factory has been in the hands of Rudolf's daughter, Anna Wahlberg, the last and sole descendant of the prestigious line of craftsmen. This inspiring figure negotiated the business through the end of the war. She breathed new light into production by creating works of art to appeal to experts and enthusiasts alike. Wahlberg automatons became rare collector's items with highly innovative mechanisms of unequaled ingeniousness to this day. Nice, and I've got that in my little collection now. Oh, hi, I've got another viewer. Welcome. All right, what else can I do in this room? I really don't have the strength to take this suitcase any further. I wonder who can help me. Hmm, maybe I can find someone to help me if I ring the bell. Ring the bell. I need a key. I've got the key. Ah, oh, yay, I figured it out. Yay, I figured it out. Okay, okay, I'm coming. Look at these graphics. This is amazing. I'm just gonna stare at you for a while. Hi there. Hello there, ma'am. Kate, help! Help, Kate! Kate, help! I would like a room. My company should have made a reservation in the name of Walker. The company is Marson and Lormont Associates. The name is Kate Walker. Of course, Miss Walker. You are in room six on the next floor up. Thank you. Okay, maybe if I ask for help, she can help me with my bags, or maybe help me with conversation? Could you possibly take my luggage up, please? Please do excuse me, Miss Walker. We there. have been neglecting our duties. Guests are so rare these days that we forget our manners. So you're the American woman? Is it true what people say, that you've come to buy the factory? Not factory. Anna's house. Hans' house. Excuse me? Was I talking to you, kid? Would you quiet down, you mischievous little boy? Ah. Oh. I imagine our little town must disappoint you. You see, today is very sad for us. It's a day of mourning. Today is the funeral of Miss Anna. I'm almost sad, but... Hans not dead. Hans long way away. Anna told Momo. Anna liked Momo very much. I feel bad. That's I'm enough, bad. Momo. It's Stop scared. pestering the lady. Now go on, scram. Go Get out of here, you hear? Go be sad about your only friend being dead somewhere else. What was I saying? Oh, yes, Miss Anna. Such a great loss for Valle de Laine, it really is. Because now that she's dead, the factory will close. But you're here to stop that happening, aren't you? Our future is in your hands, Miss Walker. What? Yes, yes, uh, Anna Varlberg is over means dead? New jobs. That's, that's how the world works. Sounds like a nice village, though. Here's your room. I hope you like it, Miss Walker. I mean, anywhere other than my house right now is pretty awesome, so... I'll leave you to rest for the time being. You must have a lot of work to do. You know, the takeover of the factory is very good news for us here. It would make us very happy to see life return to our valley. If only you had seen Valadilen before. It was delightful. 
people came from all over the world to buy Vorlberg automatons. Ah, somebody has left you some mail, I see. Remember, if you need anything at all, we're not far away, Miss Walker. I don't need that for the time being. I mean, I was been, just got off a several hour flight, I'm guessing. Facts. Dear Kate, our client, the Universal Toy Company, is more than eager to see conclusion from the talks with the Volberg Manufacturing, with a view to a takeover in the days to come. And we have received notification to this effect. We are counting on your undoubted qualities as a business lawyer to bring negotiations with Madame Anna Volberg, the current owner, to a close. Allow me to remind you that the Universal Toy Company is a multinational which has a monopoly on the toy market. It is a Class A priority client who is also presenting Madame Volberg with a golden opportunity to sell her factory. You should remind her of this fact in case she starts having last minute second thoughts before signing the purchase agreement. I am under no doubt that you will live up to the great expectations I have in you. Edward Marson. Does this woman not have her own legal counsel? So did she not have her own legal counsel? This seems very one-sided. I don't think... I wonder how good of an opportunity this really is. I should tell Marson about the death of Miss Varlberg. It's pretty I important. hope this isn't going to get too complicated. I can't see myself staying here too long. Oh, it will. It will get complicated. Boy alert, guys. She won't stay here too long. Oh, look at that old cell phone. Um. I can call my mom. I'm not sure Dan is. I'm not sure Olivia are. Marson and Lamont, how can I help you? Can you put me through to Mr. Marson, please? It's Kate Walker. Hold the line, please. Hello, Kate. So tell me, how's the case going? I've just got to Valady Len, and there's a slight problem, Mr. Marson, I'm afraid. Mrs. Vorlberg is dead. Ah, that's most unfortunate. But I seem to remember we made provisions for just such a sad eventuality, and we know that there was no heir. Yes, that's right, but... So where's the problem, Kate? Contact the notary right away. I'll get my secretary to fax you his address and an introduction letter from the firm. Very good, Mr. Marson. Right. I gotta go, Kate. Keep me up to date, okay? I just... <sighs> Subtitles did not match... The dialogue just then. Um, how do I get out of this? Oh, I can't talk to myself, I guess. Anything else I can interact with? No need to go down there. No need to go down there. Guess I don't need to go there. So if it isn't just me watching myself, if you could write something in the chat just so I can see that that works, that would be awesome. I guess I want to leave. Hey, it's the guy from the dimensionally trippy brochure. Man, it is so jarring, the transitions. Room to room. Aww. Good to see you. I did not expect it to be you. Okay, is that my... No need to go down there. Room? Go down No there. need to go down there. That doesn't look like it takes me down. It looks like it's just a room. Okay. I remember bits and pieces of this game from like a few years ago. I'm back again. Miss Walker? Can you believe it? I didn't leave. I didn't go right in front of you. A fax didn't arrive for me, did it? Maybe. I thought I heard the phone ring. Do you think you might want to go and check? Legal Certainly, ma'am. Immediately. A fax machine? How Thank outdated. you very much. Oh, wait. Aw, 
Aw, thank you, Margaret. I will do my best. And I might have two new viewers, actually. Facts! Dear Mater Oliver, as you are no doubt aware, our practice is charged with undertaking negotiations for the takeover of the Volberg Manufacturing by our client, the Universal Toy Company. It is with great sadness we learn of the recent death of the manager and owner of the factory, Madame Volberg, with whom negotiations had started. Hmm. Just give me a break on that then. We are under no doubt that Madame Volberg left you instructions before her death, enabling the sale to be concluded. I should remind you of the significant boost the arrival of the American multinational would bring to the economy of your region. It is for this reason that I'm sure you will give our representative, Miss Kate Walker, a warm welcome. Yours faithfully, Edward Marson. I don't like how he ended that. I would end that with respectfully. Thank you. At your service. Oh. Okay, can I say other yes? Um... The young boy who was here earlier talked about uh, uh, Hans. Uh, who is Hans? Not Hans? Uh, Momo was talking about Hans Vorlberg, Anna's younger brother. But he died a long time ago. Nobody here even met him. Who is the boy who was drawing here earlier? Is he your son? Heaven forbid! No, no, not at all. <laughs> He's not a bad boy, no. Not my Momo child. is just a little simple, that's all. What is his connection with Anna Varlberg? Momo is what you'd call the village idiot, and Anna took him under her wing. He must have reminded her of her younger brother, no doubt. And uh, birds of a feather stick together, don't they? You're implying that Anna Varlberg was a little bit slow as well? Heaven forbid. No, no, not at I all. I think she was going to sign that contract She was a you. real loner. She kept to herself. That's all. And you know, loners are idiots. Like that famous idiot, Nikola Tesla. <laughs> what did he ever do? Um, I just love all these little mechanical robots. I've noticed there are tons of them here in Valadilen. Be it's careful what you say. Vorlberg automatons are not robots. If you want people to like you here, never ever pronounce the word robot. George Lucas owns us. Uh, okay. We call them droids. Uh, what is the difference between an automaton and a robot, then? <laughs> uh, well, to tell you the truth, no one really knows. <laughs> Apparently one gets you ostracized by the community. Is that good enough for you, Kate? Did you know Anna Varlberg yourself? Oh, why, of course I did. I, I mean, well, not really. She was a very great lady. We loved her very much. May she rest in peace. Except that you're calling her slow and weird behind her back, but we still loved her. I guess, you know, you can say that of, like, family members, except you don't seem to be her family. I think I'm going to need your help again. Are you well, leaving like already, Miss Walker? <laughs> Should we bring down your luggage? No, no, I'm not leaving yet. It's just that... We would love to help, but just think what would happen if the telephone rang, or, or if a fax arrived, or if a customer came through the door. You, you we don't sure have five minutes arrived. rest here. I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay, no biggie. You're taking five minutes of rest when I came here. I'm going to go look around Valady Len. See you later. As you like, miss. Oh, down to just one viewer, but if you aren't me, one viewer, and you aren't Margaret, please do say hi. So I can look at that table and I can look at the things on the floor. Ah, okay, get away from there. Let's pick those up. That's right. I find stuff in this town and I just stick it in my coat. I just keepers. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, 
for? Hmm. I wonder if I missed any. This screen is quite small. Okay, there's nothing else to grab. I think that I'm supposed to finish his little toy that he was making. I guess I'll just go that way. No, I can't put it down. Okay. I guess I put it somewhere else. Oh, it sure would be nice to have a map with this town. I think I'm my only viewer. That's sad that you can count me as a viewer. I just raise the expectations. Okay, let's go to the next building. I'm no need to go down there. I guess I won't go into that next building. Okay, so if I'm going to a place that's three feet away, I run. If I'm going down the street, I walk through these slow. You know, I would love to see Legal Eagle's take on this. I've been watching him a lot on YouTube lately. Yes, yes, this is totally normal for someone to die and have just the notary sign the paperwork. Hours of danger. No need to go down there. Well, I'm happy you took your time walking there, Kate. That was, that was a musical note. That's going to work. It looks like something's missing. Well, I can't go there yet. Maybe that other building I can't go into yet is like really important in the story. And by the time I get there, I'm in a hurry and that's where she runs. No need to go down there. No need to talk to that. Hours of gameplay. Good morning. Are you open? Can I buy something from your bakery? No, afraid not. Not possible. We're closed. I can wait a while. You can wait, but we're closed all day. Day of mourning. I'm sorry. sorry we Please don't accept my condolences. Don't worry about it. Because of Madame Vorobolg's death, all the shops are closed. Mayor's decision. Try tomorrow. Now tomorrow I won't be here. That's a pity. It sounds like she's not confident with this language. No like, need to go down there. Maybe she's not supposed to be speaking English? But he seems like he's speaking English just fine. I'd like to buy something from your bakery. Is that correct? Bakery? No need to go down there. Man, there's so many things to interact with in this game. I just, where do I start? <laughs> Hours of gameplay, guys. No need to go down there. That's going to work. It looks like something's missing. I think it's the thing over here that I can grab. Mourning the loss of the queen of our hearts, who is also very sad. Okay, forget about that junk. Stiff joints, chronic hangovers, need a spring in your step? Look no further, Dr. Schwartz's Miracle Elixir. One remedy for all thousand woes. 2002. Let us pay homage today to Anna, who died peacefully yesterday at the age of 86. This great lady devoted her life to the business, her 
community, for the wilderness, for energy, for slab out time time, which is to help make us proud of our children, to not break our own sustainers, to mark all of our inhabitants, the mayor of our own town, to declare the state of the D Day of collective mourning and honor of Madame Wahlberg. The funeral will take place this morning at 10 a.m. What's 10 a.m.? My clock starts at 11. Okay, editorial marks the end of an era. After the next woman, who's the editor of the manufacturing one of the year, so it's interesting that they lost the place, kind of the death. Sounding the death knell of our automaton factory, the economic heart of our town, it is impossible to view her passing without concern for the future of our valley. In the last decade, computers, video games, and electronic robots have become the dominant in our consumer society. iPhones, they're the worst. Traditional clockwork mechanism obsolete. The age of the wind-up toy is over. Such technology cannot compete in the modern economic climate and has fallen by the wayside. It would have been definitively consigned to oblivion if Wahlberg Manufacturing had not upheld its renowned Sabbath Fair, helping Valdeline to remain economically active. However, today the industry has lost its spiritual force and the future looks bleak. Maybe the time has come to celebrate the prospective American takeover of the factory. But what will that but what will the cost to the soul of the Lind be? Okay, this is a bit awkward. Um let me just tap my phone. It's yelling at me, I'm gonna go blind. Ruin my shot. There we go. My phone does all the things. Keeps me alive. Acts as a No need to go camera. down there. Acts as a webcam. It does everything. I think I found the title for this in the YouTube video. No need to go down there. Oh, I've got a new viewer. Free to say hi in the chat. I had a newspaper, advertising fast newspaper. Okay. Facts two. There we go. Oh, this thing's jammed. There we go. That worked. This is not at all creepy. Whenever I have something to read, I drop my head down so I can look at it. Not jam now. I just hate it when you're reading something and then it disappears. Oh, there it is. That's not how eyeballs work. Okay, well I'm gonna bumble around here a bunch. What can I touch? What can I touch? I should talk to the notary first. Should I, though? Oh, I don't think my chat actually ended up on screen. That's too bad. I wonder if I'm using it wrong. Anything there? I can't take anything. Can't put fax number two down. Is this the drawer to the outside? Hello, sir. Miss Walker, I presume. Have you had a good journey? Everything went very smoothly. Thank you. Do take a seat, Miss Walker, please. One second, my automaton, I mean robot parts, need attention. Uh, it's like Chidi trying to decide on a seat, but I don't really get much of a choice, do I? 
No need to go down there. Trying to interact with fast with Shayla, so I couldn't sit. <laughs> I'm just. I imagine you are aware of the business that brings me here. Of course, I was waiting for you. Okay. I'm going to talk about me. Now. I am the legal representative for the Universal Toy Company. I'm responsible for. So I understood, Miss Walker. Uh, Miss Walker, I am afraid that the sale of the Vorlberg factory is not as straightforward as it first seemed. Whoa there. Everything was agreed. We'd obtained Anna Vorlberg's consent, and her death does absolutely nothing to invalidate that. Now, I have to be back in New York the day after tomorrow, Metro Alphotair. My client and I are impatient to seal this deal. I understand only too well, Miss Walker. <clears throat> there is a... An heir, Miss Walker. Excuse me, an heir? But Madame Varlberg never married, as far as I know. And in my last conversation with her, she absolutely never mentioned this you detail. Miss Walker, believe me, I was more surprised than you are. Anna Varlberg sent me a letter two days before she died. Understand, Miss Walker, that had I known about this earlier, I would have informed you. I shall read you the document in my possession. <clears throat> Yay, I don't have to read to you guys for once. I am so very old. It seems that today life is slipping away from me more quickly than I imagined. And I fear that I will not be of this world to sign the takeover contract for my dear factory. So, I must make this confession to you now. My brother, Hans, is still alive. <gasps> It would not surprise me if you find this difficult to believe, but it is indeed the truth. You must remember his death, his funeral, too, even though you were very young at the time. It was but a sordid charade dreamt up by our father. To him, the very idea that his only son should wish to leave Baladilen and abandon the family business was unbearable. When Hans left, he preferred to think him dead and make everybody else believe this, too. He obliged me to bear this terrible secret as well. I repeat that Hans is still alive. So when I die, it is he who becomes the sole and rightful heir of our factory. Okay, I see. If Hans Barlberg is not dead after all, then I just have to sign the contracts with him. I suppose you've already contacted him? Where can I reach him? The second half of the letter informs us that Hans Vorlberg is somewhere in Siberia. I will leave the document in your hands to read at your leisure. I hear, but on the box, it's alive. I have never had the chance to see my dear brother again, so how do you feel he's really alive? Fortunately, though, Hans and I have remained very close. In thought. Oh, so fast. I had to dream about that. Throughout the years, I have been able to follow his meandering life as he sporadically sent me news. On occasions, he would write me letters, but they were rare, as my brother, since his unfortunate accident, has maintained a phobia for the written word. Didn't know that was a thing. However, he has sent me several plans for automatons that I eagerly had made up at the factory, and I will admit, they have largely contributed to the success of Valborg creations. Hans has always had a marvelous way to breathe in life into objects through clever combinations of cogwheels and springs. My little brother is a genius in the true sense of the word. Let us return to the matter in hand. Rest assured of my personal conviction that my brother will not object in the slightest to the sale of the factory. So why not just say that the notary is in charge now? Why say that you have a legal heir if you legally had him declared dead decades ago? This is a case for the illegal. I'm way above my pay grade. If I have already passed away when you come to read this letter, it is to him that the matter should be addressed. I received this, his last letter six months ago, so he could have been dead in the last six months. 
Does this legally count as proof of life? I wonder. I haven't watched you way too much legally. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Where was I? Um, I've already passed away. It is to him that the matter should be addressed. I received his last letter six months ago, posted from the north of Siberia. I regret to say that I received no more recent news. I am aware of the difficult situation in which my confession and lack of further details leave you. Sounds like a you problem, not a me problem. <laughs> but I wish to die with a clear conscience. I would be grateful, Demetia Marfeller. I can't, I can hardly speak English. If you could inform the American law firm with whom I have been dealing with of these developments, I have grown so old, so tired, with all my respect and final greeting. Anna Volberg. I feel like she should have also had the notary sign this maybe at the same time, but again, I'm not a lawyer. I would not know. Anna Varlberg had no further information to add? Unfortunately not, Miss Walker. Age, I have told you as much as I know. The situation in legal terms is now clear. If you want to conclude this sale, you have to find Hans Volberg. Apparently, there is a body lying in the town cemetery. There also seems to be some ghost wandering around Siberia. It seems you have your work cut out for you. Do I have Believe me, Miss Walker, I when I say that I am most sorry for this regrettable setback. I don't think I remember doing that as a teenager. Uh, most sorry. Great. What now, then? Perhaps you will find out more in the Vorlberg factory archives. You will find the key in the waiting room. My role in this affair finishes here with the reading of this letter. And now, if you'll excuse me, I must rest. You see, my health is not excellent at the moment, and my doctor forbids me from working for too if long. He coughs and put on a face mask. I will not detain you for any longer, Miss Walker. Although this was around the time Do not of forget ours. to close the door it's as you go out. Goodbye, sir. It's my turn to do stuff now. Okay. Can I use that door now? No need to go down there. The game. I don't think it has any ink in it. Ho ho ho, dear reader. Ho ho ho, dear watcher. Okay, so I guess I need to go to the graveyard. Oh, hey! I know what that is. No need to go down there. The game. I can't wait for the sequel. Need to go down there. No need to go down there. I love the curves. No need to go down there. Uh, I love how early 2000s video games, when they discovered curves in the graphics. Maybe that's the graveyard. I see the line. Okay, I guess it's just locked.
You know what would help in this game? A map. I am going to pause this real quick. This game. Alright, I will be back in just a bit. So be right back and transition and cut. Bit bigger. There we go. There we go. Okay, I'm back. My mic audio is up. My game audio is up. Turn to game. Okay. Just had to go and check on the TV real quick because my very close personal friend Jimmy has this thing he does most weeknights. But I don't think she's seen my video on YouTube yet, unfortunately. I guess enough of my friends haven't seen it yet. Kids in their video games today, they they expect things to happen. They understand the slow Hello? joy of Kate? the game. Dan, I'm so pleased to hear your voice. How are you, honey? Did you have a good journey? Have you settled in? Uh, it was long, tiring, damp especially, but I'm okay. Especially when you... Everything going as planned? Yeah, I mean, well, not really. It's not exactly what I thought it would be. You know, everything's so different here. Actually, while we're on the subject, I managed to free myself up from our lunchtime. I'll come and meet you at the airport. I hope the flight from Paris won't be delayed. We're expected at the Goldbergs about 8 o'clock. I hope you have the time to take a shower and change, my poor honey bun. Dan, I don't think the Goldbergs tomorrow night is really on. Don't worry, Kate. You'll be as perfect as ever. Anyway, you never have to wear much to look really great. Dan, Dan, I I I'm going to have to extend my stay here. There's one or two... Complications. You understand? Kate, hey, honey, what are you talking about? It's only a measly toy factory. The sale isn't going factory? through as expected. I, I've got to stay a bit longer. Dan, you don't mind, do you? But Kate, Katie, you can't do this to me. I mean, it's the Goldberg contract. There's millions of dollars on the line here. I know, I'm sorry. You go ahead. Don't worry about me. I'll get back as soon as I can. I promise. I don't think he does sound like he's very okay, I, I, I've got to go. I'll call you back soon. Love you, honey. At least someone loves someone in this relationship. Nope, I took it out. Oh, okay, oh, I took it out. this rich 3D environment. Back in the day, it also took up the entire screen too. I wonder who owns this place. creepy at all. And it's in the basement. Maybe the 
captures the base jumping. Doesn't look like that works. Oh, I was just gonna say, no reason to go down there. Doesn't look like that works. Okay, well, I guess there is nothing to see here in this factory but a bunch of creepy robots. Oh, oops, sorry. Automatons. No one's here. I'll be right back. Just want to check something real quick. Check something real quick. It's been checked and it checks out. Oh, so I bet that's why they're not doing anything because the water wheel isn't turning. Man, these games get so much easier when you're an adult and you know how like the world works and how like water meals work. Oh no, I can go down each and every one of these paths. Well, hopefully this is where I need to be. I can only hope this is where I need to be. There's something. Oh god! Neat. So that, that's a thing. I don't need to do that again. Hope you're taking notes, because I'm not doing it again. Okay, well, lift that. Can you lift that? No, no, you can't? Okay, well, that was thrilling, and I feel like I learned a lot from this. So much. Hours of gameplay. I wonder if you ever hear like the next 
stay and all those stores that were closed actually open? Or did they actually program for every door to be clickable only for you to not actually be able to access it? I think I remember this building. I don't think I need to go down there right now. Walking into the wall. wall. No need to go down there. No need to go down there. There's a game. These shelves look as if they're made for valuable objects. Someone has taken them before I could. It's a fan. Whoever lives here likes to be comfortable. Well, this was impossible. rich 3D environments to interact with. Ooh, ooh, I bet that's foreshadowing. I bet I'm gonna go to this one. I don't actually remember where I'm going in this game. But maybe it's those places. Oh. No need to go down there. Forgot. I have no need to go down there. Hmm. Just think for the thrilling price of a dollar and twenty four cents, you can also have no need to go down there. The game. All the better to take in these rich 3D environments, I guess. Hmm. Hours of thrilling gameplay. I'm locking my own game, I don't think that's good. I am having fun though. You know what, I'm gonna hide the chat box. 
because it's not actually doing anything. Alright, I need a shovel and directions to the graveyard. But those things are not related. The door's locked, but I've still got to get in there. What is there? Okay, I think that I came to the town too early. Or to the factory too early. Unless this is the way to the graveyard? I just don't remember where the graveyard is. I'm pretty sure that's where I need to get to, but how? If only there was some sort of map. What's this clickable item? I feel like if I made my OBS screen bigger, I'd be able to see this bigger. But this is actually about only half of my screen. It's a ladder. It's a ladder thing that isn't climbable. Awesome. The door's locked, but I've still got to get in there. Secret passage, maybe? Look at those curves. Gorgeous. Ooh, there's a maze. Any other options? <laughs> Is that a different option or is that also the maze? Also the maze. Okay, looks like I'm going in a maze. Good morning. You've got a magnificent garden here. I take care of the place while the master is away. Oh, please don't talk about it. Since my gardener automaton broke down, there are weeds everywhere. You can't imagine how much work it takes me. I don't know whether I'm coming or going. We're not used to doing without our robot help here in Veladiland. <gasps> but everybody her. says that we're going to have to get used to it. That's what they say. I guess you can't tell me where the graveyard is then. Oh yes, the venality of man. Such good art. Hmm. Excuse me, sorry. Hmm. Or don't, excuse me. I don't tell you what to do. I'm gonna die in this maze, aren't I? That looks important. I'm just gonna pick it up. Find his keepers. That's how the laws are in Switzerland, right? I, I wonder if that opens that gate. No point, it's locked. I don't think he's a very good climber. Okay, well, the upside is I did not get lost in the maze. And I got a thing that might do 
a thing. So net positive, I guess. <laughs> The half magnifying glass. Wow, that goes up really high. The half magnifying glass versus whole magnifying glass look very similar, especially when my mouse is on top of it. Just another normal day for me, Kate Walker, New York attorney at law. Okay, so is this like their house? Okay, so I can actually see this better on my OBS screen than I can on the actual screen itself. Is there nothing in this corner? Did I just come all the way over here for nothing? Are those flies? Is there something dead up here? What a rich 3D environment. are prehistoric creatures as well. That much I know. I hate mammoths now. It's all because of them, because of that stupid prehistoric children's toy. Why, Hans? Oh, why did you try and take it? And why did I let you climb up there? It's my fault you are in a coma now. Hans, if you die, I do not know how I will ever forgive you. One day later, Hans is still not regained consciousness. Father cannot sleep, and Gertrude cries all day long. Outside, the heat is suffocating, but inside, the house is icy, cold, and dismal. I still have hope, though. I know my brother. I know his strength. He will pull through. He never gives in. May 17th. At least she's consistent each day. 17th, 18th, 19th, 20 I cannot think of anything else but Hans. In all my waking and sleeping dreams, I see his fall over and over. Girl, she needs to talk to someone about this. That diary is something, but like she should actually see someone. I see his head hitting the rock and his oh so pale face softening. I have taken refuge in this attic. It is the only place where I find any peace wrapped up in all of my memories. Five days have passed since the accident, and Hans still has not opened his eyes. To see him like this is unbearable. Please, God, protect him. Take my life, not his. Okay, five days in a coma is pretty bad. Uh, I, yeah. I feel so desperate, so alone. I want to snuggle up in Father's arms, but I dare not. He's just so impassive. Oh, Hans, don't leave me here. It has happened. Hans has come back to life. 
He opened his eyes and uttered my name. My name? Do you realize this is the happiest day of my life? I want to take to the streets and sing to proclaim my joy to the world. Thank you. Thank you, God. Well, that's... How wonderful, how beautiful life is. Gertrude and I cannot stop breaking uncontrollable fits of giggles. Hans even wolfed down his meal today. I knew he was tough, my little brother. Even father smiled at me today, but he said good morning. <laughs> Much better than what he normally does. I don't know whether I'm coming or going. I'm fully absorbed in Hans' recovery. I have scarcely five minutes to myself to return to my refuge and scribble down these words. Well, that's good. May 29th. It is very curious whether Hans is hungry, thirsty, or if he wants something. He cannot say, stop saying my name. He can't bear it when I leave him, even for an instant. Gertrude thinks I should move my bed into his room to help him sleep better. I hope that father will agree. Aww. This got sad. June 2nd. Why are there flies in his attic? I don't like that sound. Today was the first day that Hans has left the house. We went for a short walk in the garden. But Hans is still very weak. The doctor said we should be patient and shouldn't rush him. It is so hard, though. I hope so much that he can return to how it once was. But life can. Goodness, she writes a lot of diary entries. Hans has been out of his coma for a month now. He still doesn't say much and has difficulty moving. He sits motionless for long periods of time, his eyes wide open as though lost in thought. I have often had to call his name several times before he reacts. Then he will smile, and when he does, the moment is magic for me, and I couldn't possibly be happier. I had to talk to him. The burden was too great. I asked Hans about the accident in the cave to find out what he could remember. He could utter only one word. I asked Hans about the accident, oh, and his eyes glowed so strangely that when he said it, it frightened me. And now we skip up to September. I go back to school today, and for the first time in my life, I am dreading it. I am afraid of leaving Hans alone. Despite Gertrude's kindness and attention, I have the impression that Hans is much less nervous when I am there. October 20th. While I was doing my homework yesterday evening, Hans crept up on me so quietly that he made me joke. <laughs> he took a pencil and a blank sheet of paper and curiously started drawing. It was the first time since his accident he has done anything but daydream. Poor child. Both of them. Eight days later. Hans scribbles almost obsessively. It is all he will do, all day long. I fail to know his father, but nobody else understands. But I can see that Hans is trying to draw mammoths. Today is my birthday. Anger she just made an apple pie. My favorite. But father has not returned home for lunch, and Hans doesn't want to leave his room. The best present I could ever have is to see Hans back on the way to recovery. December 25th. Snow is falling. It is so beautiful. January 10th. The doctor visited to examine Hans. He seems happy that my little brother has fully recovered his facilities. It truly is a miracle. I don't understand why he doesn't talk more, though. Why isn't he livelier, like he was before? February 9th. It is Hans' birthday. Today he is 11 years old. I have the strangest of impressions that actually he has lost five years rather than gained one more. This is sad. The doctor has just left. I saw him whispering with father. Their serious expressions worried me awfully. What could they be hiding from me? I'm grown up now. At the age of 15, you, I can, you can understand everything. I am too scared to ask father what is happening. I have been thinking, and it seems to me that Han's attitude isn't normal. The shock of the fall and his coma must have had much more serious effects than we first imagined. Hans, my dear brother, what is happening to you? April 4th. I have discovered the truth. Hans is stunted, physically and mentally. I eavesdropped the conversation between the doctor, father, and Gertrude. Gertrude buried her tear-filled eyes in her apron, and father muttered the word I'm not going to say under his breath. How could he say such a thing? This is sad. I forgot how sad this was. It is Easter, and we're all on school holidays. This means I can spend all my day with Hans and protect him from father's permanent dark moods. He cannot accept the fact that Hans, his only son, will stay in this state forever. Wow. 
And then rather than deal with it, he fakes his son's death. We know this already. It is truly difficult to accept, but it is not Han's fault. Mine, maybe, but not Han's. I don't know how to make Father understand. He seems so full of hatred for him. It's dreadful. I feel so powerless. I'm starting to feel a little depressed. Gosh. Hours of fun. One year. One year has gone by, and it feels like an eternity. The situation shows no signs of improvement, neither in terms of Han's mental health or Father's attitude towards him. Although I can kind of already see me, you know, March, what was it, 9th, 10th? It's been a year we've been in quarantine. Maybe by then I'll finish February 3rd. Extraordinary! Father has decided to take Hans to Paris for new tests. He says that only the French capital will he find truly competent doctors. We must make Hans ready for the great expedition. No news from Father and Hans, but I remain hopeful. I am sure they'll take good care of my little brother. Oh, oh the special needs back there are not good. They have returned. It's an exclamation, so maybe this is good. Hans rushed into my arms and started crying. Why would you put an exclamation point there, Anna, if you're gonna, your next sentence is gonna end like that? It took me a long time to call him down and get him to sleep. Father is still as term as he was before he left. The French doctors have confirmed the diagnosis. Hans will remain physically and mentally impaired. I am stunned. The summer is coming to a close. It has been less stifling than the last. The sun has put color in Hans's cheeks. When I look at him, I have difficulty imagining that he will not change. November 16th. Father still says nothing and increasingly shuts himself away in his office at the factory. Hours of fun. Gertrude tells me that love and faith triumph over any science. I lack neither. God be praised. Okay, so she's saying she has love and faith. Father took Hans to the factory this morning. Hans was so afraid that I accompanied them. Fortunately, Father said nothing. I failed to understand why he insisted on bringing him there. Father left for the factory with Hans. Once again this morning, I think he wants to persuade Hans that he could be useful for something. It is his way of resisting fate. You know, maybe Hans can be useful for something, Anna. February 17th. For a month now, every morning, Hans has gone to work with Father at the factory. I'm not exactly sure what he does there, but he seems to enjoy it. I feel my brother's behavior has changed considerably. He is much less capricious. April 14th. I could cry. Hans has made me a present. A small robot mammoth with a trunk that rises and falls. When Father saw it, he nodded his head in satisfaction. Golly, maybe when you give someone an opportunity to grow and learn, they do. Both Gertrude and Father have now ha both and Father now have their own robot mammoth. She said the R word robot, you're not supposed to say that in this village. Theirs are even more intricate and finely tuned. Little brother is not such a after all. <sighs> Hans mammoths now walk, raise their trunks, and wag their tails. It's incredible. I met with the head of the factory workshop, Mr. Grip, this morning. He says for a young man of lad of 12, Hans is very gifted. It is a shame he only makes elephants. Oh my gosh, they are mammoths, not elephants. Gosh. Father and Hans were locked in a long discussion yesterday. So Hans is about 13 now. Sorry, locked in one of Father's long monologues, not discussion. Or should I say Hans was locked in one of Father's long monologues? As it was inconceivable that Hans should go to school like the other children. Father wants to take him on as a worker at the factory. However, Hans will need to stop making his own little devices. Hans silenced, his half-gaping mouth and staring eyes finally sent Father off into a rage. 
I tried to broach the subject with Hans. I suggested that he should obey father. Learning the craft of the factory is his one chance to do something constructive with his life. He is so gifted and talks so, takes so much pleasure in making automatons. He did look like he wasn't listening to me, but I know he'll think about what I said. February 20th. It's not that Hans cannot speak, it's rather that he doesn't want to speak. He uses the least possible words for communication, except with me. But he's still very economical with words. May 15th. Incredible. Hans is not just satisfied with learning how the assembly line works, instead he has completely redesigned it. Father and Monsieur Gritz are taking a serious look at his plans. See, he's good at stuff. Father has wanted to talk to me about my future since I passed my exam. He wants me to spend send he wants to send me to university because he says my intelligence is astounding. My heart was beating so loud. It is true. I do love studying, even though I'm a girl. But I couldn't care to be away from Hans. And then I keep going. Okay. What a ghastly summer. I have been permanently torn between my desire to go to university and my refusal to leave my brother. I talked about it with Hans, but he said nothing. That same evening, I found my own little mammoth broken. Aww. Hans had another fit of hysterics at dinner again. Peter announced that Hans' new assembly line would soon be finished. However, they have removed the automaton parrots that shout orders as they were deemed superfluous. That's amazing! I love it! Hans was livid. As would I be, Hans. As would I be. He hurled his soup dish to the ground and stormed off to his bedroom. What will happen between the both of them when I'm not here? Despite my scruples, I am finally leaving. In October? Mid-semester? Do semesters work differently in Europe? Hans has not talked to me for a week. Father would not understand if I told him why I wanted to stay. My heart is so heavy. It is so strange to be home. I had never left home for such a long time before. A month? I guess about two months. Once we were alone, Hans did not stop talking. Words just leaped from his mouth. How he laughed at his excitement. He presented me with a delightful little ballerina to replace the mammoth, he told me. I was so touched that I started crying. This has done nothing to harm the strong bond between us. Aww. Seriously, she left for school in the middle of October? It is so strange to pick up this diary once more. At first, my impulse was to tear it up, but I resisted and instead succumbed to my second desire, which was to write for a while. I am alone in my attic once more. I have been home for two months now. September? Yeah, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> After a summer spent living with the intense joy of being reunited with my brother, Hans has returned to the factory. Father has aged so, has aged so and Gertrude's arthritis causes her terrible pain. All in all, these last four years have been kind to Father and Hans. The relationship is less tense. They still do not exchange much conversation, but they do have a thing in common. The factory! I'm even beginning to feel a bit jealous. Silly, really. My computer was thinking for a second. Why was it thinking? Hans hasn't changed. Five days. To help Gertrude, he has designed a fully automated kitchen, and Gertrude can't stop moaning at the wooden puppets. Oh, how I adore them. October 9th. I went to go and see Father and Hans at work. I hadn't been to the factory for ages. It is strange how much it has changed. I was very curious to see them set about their tasks. I like Father's new office very much. Hans has a small workshop on the first floor crowned with odds and ends, unfinished robots and designs. Exactly as I imagined it, in fact. That really doesn't tell me much about that day in your life, Anna, just saying. Like, it helps me out, because, like, it's painting a picture of your town, but not really a notable event. The factory is working very well, orders for the toys keep coming in, spurred on by the run-up to Christmas. When I was at university and I said my name was Wallerberg, he would ask me if I said it right, and if I had any relation to the Valadine factory. Now I know the effect that Hans' genius has had on the factory's renown. To make myself useful, I started helping Father set his papers in order. The most extraordinary thing of it all is that for the first time ever, I have the impression that the three of us form a real family. Aww. Hans 
never ceases to surprise me. Between home and the factory, his behavior is so very different. In his workshop, he is serious, concentrated, a proper young man who keeps his eye on everything going on, constantly on the move and in control. One has the impression that each single toy is his very own infant. At home, he turns back into a child once more and is either moody or a happy-go-lucky buffoon. Christmas. The most wonderful Christmas of my whole life. Hans and I could not stop giggling like the children, like children beneath father's disapproving glare. I know that he was only pretending, really. Our hearts are so full of hope. January 5th. Hans came to see me in my bedroom yesterday evening. I felt terribly awkward. I felt terribly awkward, terribly ill at ease. I might have guessed. Hans wants to leave. Leave validating. The house and the factory. He wants to go traveling. He wants a gap year. That's totally normal. For, you know, people who own a factory. He doesn't know where to or for how long. That's just like him. I was so shocked that I told him his plans were foolish. He left my room without a word. His head bowed. I mean, you should know where you want to go before you. That, that's just fine. January 7th. I thought he'd wanted to leave because of father. Not at all. It's because of the mammoths. He wants to go tracking mammoths. We had to sit down and have a little chat about mammoths. I thought he had gone over his obsession. I know my brother only too well. I wouldn't dream of telling him his quest is useless. Aww. So she did not have a conversation. It isn't worth it. He will not listen to reason. He, I was so selfish the other evening. I returned to talk to Hans and asked gently if he was sure of his decision. I already know what the reply is going to be. Nothing will make him change his mind. Despite my profound sadness and despair, I must help Hans fulfill the destiny he has chosen and announce the news to father. I fear the worst. The worst was worse than my fears. Father's anger was terrifying. He shut Hans away in his workshop. Shut Hans away in his workshop at the factory and has been all visits except from Gertrude, who feels who feeds him. I think that's imprisonment. Definitely child abuse. Father has decided that Hans should remain locked up for as long as it takes him to abandon his infantile decision. Gertrude tells me that Hans is very despondent yet highly resolute. The worry is driving me mad. February 6th. As soon as Gertrude returns from the factory, I hasten to get the news of my little brother. He doesn't say anything. He just fiddles with bits and pieces. She replies every day with a sigh. I have tried desperately to reason with Father, but I know I am just wasting my breath. Hans is 18 years old today, and he is all on his own for his birthday. Oh, poor kid. In secret, Gertrude delivered me a small robot from Hans. It's a robot of us's children. It works with a small cylinder punched with tiny holes. I quivered with emotion as I turned the key. The message it gave me was simple. He was telling me he loved me very, very much. Gertrude gave me a different tiny cylinder for today's toy. Hans is truly incredible. He has found a means of communicating between us, between us and us alone in total secret. My days are spent eagerly awaiting Hans' messages. He is now resolved to run away. He is preparing his escape, like as if it were the game. Oh my gosh, this is a long diary. I didn't remember how much reading was in this game. Gertrude has returned, and she is beside herself. Hans has disappeared. Father has not even dying to return to the workshop where he locked up his son, nor find out how he managed to escape. He just gave, gave me a black look as if he knew we were up to something behind his back. How could she? You locked him in a room, not even in the house, in a factory. March 7th, it's beginning to dawn on me that Hans is gone. I miss him so much. Lord, please protect my little brother and watch over him for me. With Hans gone, Father now locks himself away night and day at the factory. The house is so gloomy now. I guess there's perhaps karmatic consequences to locking up your son for years? This morning, I caught Father in the drawing room installing a coffin on a trestle. The sight of it made my blood freeze. What on earth was he up to? My questions met only with stony silence and a permanent black countenance. Countenance. Behind closed curtains, the drawing room with the coffin, surrounded by huge candles, has become a veritable funeral chamber. This is ghastly. I have just understood what Father is up to. This morning, the priest came to pray over the coffin, and I finally caught on. Father is in mourning. 
for the death of Hans. Father made the priest believe that his son was dead. How could he do such a thing? I'm guessing it was easier than, you know, locking a kid in a room for about a year. Not even a kid at that point, he's also an adult. In the madness occasioned by his grief, my father grows even more cold and calculating. He contacted his old friend, Dr. Schmull, who duly drew a bona fide death certificate without even seeing the body. I dare not imagine what yarn he spun. Hans' funeral will be officially held next Sunday. Father strictly forbade me to attend. The sordid masquerade makes me feel ill, but I cannot denounce the subterfuge or else I will display my father's mental instability to the world. The shame would kill him, that much is certain. I have to get away. Far, far away. A month later. No, I will not leave. I have thought long and hard. My life is here next to my father. He needs me too much now. The factory needs me because father's incapable of running it now. Besides, I can only find peace of mind among Hans' robots. And how shall I know when he has sent me new ones if I am not at home to receive them? No, I shall not leave. My destiny is to remain here and keep watch. I, I, I feel like I should apologize because there was kind of a lot of tonal shift in that. What a roller coaster. Hours of fun. Okay, is there anything else? Ooh. Chest? No. There's a light bulb. <gasps> I did not remember there being jump scares in this. You draw mamas for Momo? Ah, oh, Momo, it's you. You scared me. What are you doing in here? Momo want mama's picture, like Han's picture. Sorry, I haven't got a picture of a mammoth with me. Take paper and pencil and draw mammoth for Momo. <laughs> you don't give up easily, do you? Look, he didn't say it had to be a good picture of a mammoth. You remember me, don't you? I'm Kate. Draw mammoth for Momo, please. You must find me a bit rude turning up places uninvited where nobody knows who I, I am. I don't think he cares, Kate. <laughs> See, it's kind of my job, you know, to get involved. But don't mind me. Just carry on with what you're doing. Momo not mind. Anna kind. Never angry. That's right. She won't be angry. Not now. She'll never be angry again. You're a sweet kid, Momo. But I can't draw. Least of all, mammoths. Draw mammoths easy. Hands draw mammoths. Anna draw mammoth. Kate, too. I mean, maybe I could do a quick squiggle of a box, say, that has a mammoth inside. No. Momo want a real mammoth. <sighs> My goodness, you are one stubborn boy. My goodness, I definitely didn't get that when I was a teenager, but that isn't, that's uh, the little prince. Okay, let's see. There's something I'm looking for, but I don't quite know what. I need a clue, anything that might tell me where Hans is. You want to help me, don't you? First, you draw mammoths for Momo. And if I help you, you help me, right? Uh, quick mm, Momo no, Kate is kind. Kate draw mammoths for Momo. Then Momo tell Kate's secret. You've got a secret? First, draw mammoths for Momo. 
Okay, I'm not gonna Mama, bother going through this. I've gotta go now. But see you later, maybe. Okay, I'm kind of cheating here. But there is a woolly mammoth, I think, somewhere in this... I just thought it was on the desk. Cheater, cheater. That isn't a drawing so much it is a rubbing. Don't accept this deal, Momo. Cheating you. Momo, I've got something else I want to ask you. Momo no listening. Momo. Here, kid. You happy now? Oh, he did a little happy dance. Mm, thank you. Momo happy. Now follow Momo. Momo show his secret to Kate. That's the thing about, you know, following NPCs. You're either way too fast or way too slow. Door's locked, but I've still got to get in there. You know, I'm kind of surprised. I was able to get up to the attic, but the attic didn't lead into the rest of the house. There's Momo. Look, I really hope Momo is here to show me where to go.
is a lot slower than I remember. <laughs> Oh, no, Momo, I already tried that key. It's locked. Momo had the key. But I wonder if that's like standard architecture for Switzerland? Such rich, pretty environments. I say that mockingly, but it's actually. I really hope I can fast travel back to the town. I need to go back to the town though. Hours. Bobo, how much further? I'm not sure if I wore sneakers. <sighs> there you are, Momo. This is some walk you've taken me on. I've got to say, though, it sure is mighty pretty. Momo come here often. Momo like make splash in water. Let me reintroduce myself. Because of you, Momo, I look more like an explorer than a lawyer now. If Dan could see me, I don't think he'd like what he saw. Momo don't know Dan. And Dan don't know Kate. Why have you brought me here? Mammoth doll in cave. Very important for Hans, Anna said. Cave? What cave? Where? Momo, not liar. I didn't say you were a liar. I just said. Right. Now we're here. What do we do? Kate and Momo throw stones in water. Momo, we're here because of the cave. Something to do with the cave. Momo and Kate, friends. Tell me, Momo, do you really think that after all these years, Anna's brother is still alive? Anna always say hands go away, but hands come back, maybe. You are a strange one, Momo. I'm beginning to see why Anna Varlberg liked you. Momo, he... Mm, Momo look, look like Hans. Momo very proud. I'll be right back. I just really want a cookie. It must be fascinating to live in a village full of automatons. Automatons made by hands. Difficult work. When Momo big, he do like hands. Momo friend of automatons. Tell me, Momo, did you come here a lot with Anna? Mm-hmm. Anna like Momo. Anna like Hans. Anna on journey. Momo, I've got to go now. 
But see you later, maybe. Wait, Anna. Is that one journey? Okay. Um. Be broken. I've got to get a helping hand here. That must be broken. I've got to get a helping hand here. Can't go that way. What? This little rich New Yorker I can't get a boot I Can't go that way. <laughs> okay, I'm stuck. Momo, I've got something else I want to ask you. Momo listening. Why have you brought me here? Mammoth doll in cave. Very important for hands, Anna say. Cave? What cave? Where? Momo not liar. Can you help me, please? What do? Help me open the dam. Um, Momo strong. That looks broken. That looks broken. That looks broken. Well, it's been a fun time playing this video game. Looks like I failed it. Um... Momo, I've got something else I want to ask you. Why did you Momo, break it, Momo listening. Can you help me, please? What do? Help me open the dam. Dam broken. Can you help me, please? What do? Help me open the dam. Dam broken. It must be fascinating to live in a village full of automatons. Automatons made by hands. Difficult work. Why have you brought me here? Mammoth doll in ca cave? Momo. Because of you, Momo. I Momo do Why are you telling me about Don? 
You are a strange Momo. He. Momo? I can't go that way. Why can't you go that way? What's so important about your shoe? It doesn't look that deep. I am so scared I have to go all the way back to the town. I could use one of the oars from this boat as a lever, but how am I ever going to get a hold of it? I could use one... is all dirty and wet. Ugh. That ore is all dirty and wet. Ugh. That ore is all dirty and wet. Okay, well let's see if Mobo's any less of a baby. I've moved the ore nearer. Be a good boy and carry it for me. Mum will say yes. Hey, you are a horrible person. Ow, it's all dirty and wet. I don't want to carry it. I'll get the. I'll get Momo to do it. mean hey, you're not a very good person are you I'm starting to think that you and Dan might have some other things in common Momo I've got something else I want to ask you Momo listening can you keep doing my bidding? Can you help me, please? What do? I need a hand opening the dam. Momo say yes. Momo strong. Strong. Thank you, Momo. No be cross no Momo. Golly gee whiz, I wonder if the factory now has power. I wonder if the water level is low enough that I'll actually consider walking over to the gate. That was not very deep. That was at most a foot, not even a foot.
very nice mammoth doll. Is there ever actually fully mammoths in Europe, I wonder? I don't actually know where in the ancient world they think about my purple frame. Hello? Kate? Is that you? Well, yeah, who did you think it was? Uh, I didn't recognize your voice, that's all. Must be the distance or something. So, spill the beans. What's Europe like? You lucky lady, you. Honestly, I never get that kind of break. Well, so far all I've seen of Europe is this tiny village, and frankly, they're not very hospitable. Uh, the whole case is getting really complicated. There's this surprise heir I've got to find. I know. I talked to Lynn, who bumped into Joss, and she had coffee with the head honcho this morning. He didn't sound at all happy. The client's meeting him tomorrow, and when Marston tells him that the sale's not even gone through yet, whoa, you're gonna be pleased you're on the other side of the ocean when that bomb goes off. Yeah, I get the picture. But so, how about yourself? What's up at work? A surprise air. We lost the Farrah Lou trial. I worked five months on that dumb case. You know, I remember. For not so, for a bit of therapy, I went to Boomies. The sale started yesterday. Wow, lucky. It was absolutely crazy, Katie. Absolute mayhem. You know that blue silk top I wanted? Guess how much I got it for. I don't know. 250 200 a hundred and forty dollars. <laughs> Just get yourself back here and I'll go down with you. <laughs> like it's my choice. Look, I gotta go. Call me soon, huh? I want a blow-by-blow -blow account of every moment of your great adventure. Get out of here. Look after yourself. You too. Yeah, I will. See, that's a very important question because it shows us that she is shallow and like shocked because she's a girl from New York City. Mm. It's nice to imagine myself in that nice hot earth in Europe outside of my condo. I feel like this must be really easy to program. Because you don't actually have to worry about the sprite going here or there for a little bit, for a lot of bits, because there's really only one task for the sprite to take. Okay, so I guess I'm going to go to the factory now. No need to go down there. No need to go down there. No need to go down there. I now have the mammoth toy. 
I vaguely remember some of the steps of this game. I've got the mammoth toy, I know I need to leave this town on that train that I already saw with my new automaton best friend. that was made by Hans, and I think he's somewhere in the factory, if I remember correctly. But now that I've opened up the dam, I do believe I probably have water flowing. It'd be a nice touch if like, there was water coming out of the fountain now, to symbolize something has changed here. Nope. I guess not. Momo go. Usually have some good ideas. I don't think I tried going up those stairs last time. prison. I mean, workshop. That's very pretty. Oh, there we go. Okay, dear Hans, I know how much you dislike the written word. But I have no time to forge you a voice cylinder. I imagine that someone in your entourage will be kind enough to read you these few lines to you. I see your latest set of plans, your project is extraordinary, your all-time masterpiece, perhaps. Time seems to have had no effect on your genius. Quite the contrary. I am proud of you, my dear little brother. Sometimes I find it hard to believe that a century has a century has gone by since the last time I saw you. It's been about seventy years. It's been 84 years. Okay. Things like just yesterday that you rushed away from Valentine. We undertook production immediately, following your instructions to the letter. The locomotive was ready within a week. If only you could see it, but you will see it. That much I have promised you. It is magnificent. It seems impatient to set out upon its main voyage. It's there is only Oscar left to build. I hope you will finish him soon. I hope I finish him soon. But as you can imagine, his mechanism is complex and takes a great deal of time and handy. Aww. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I understand you wish me to bring you that cursed prehistoric doll. The very thought of which I wonder... The very thought of which I wonder if it is still in the cave and if it is what state is in. It's actually doing pretty good. I got it. What does 60 years matter, after all, to an object already several thousand years old? I'm going to find it, Hans, I promise you. I have every bit a nasty flu at the moment, which is running me down a little. I should be better in a few days, though. The sale of the factory is taking shape. The lawyer from New York should be visiting and will be able to sign the contract. Then I shall... It actually says dot, dot, dot. How dramatic. Okay, here we 
received several warnings from my office penalty content invoices from the company. Total debt currently stands at a lot of money. Strongly advise you to quit your of debt by sending this to the Resident Payment Center. The absence of response may require I'll be obliged to undertake legal proceedings against you and recover the outstanding funds. Oh my gosh. Invoices, invoices, more invoices. I never knew the factory was in such a bad way financially. These last two years must have been very hard for Anna Vorlberg. Personal artifacts, can I go through? How much can I make you turn around? Okay, why am I able to look at this thing if there isn't something for me to click on? <gasps> oh! This thing's jammed. Oh, this thing's jammed. Oh, this thing's jammed. Doesn't look like that works. power back to the factory. So I need to find Oscar. Oscar the Atomic. Yes, hello? Kate, what happened to you, my poor munchkin? I've been trying to contact you for hours. Well, I'm in Europe, Ma. Here. Job thing. What? Europe? My God. 
Oh, I've got such happy memories of Europe. Some of them even involve your father, but uh, <laughs> that's enough of that. Tell me, where Marriage. are you? Paris? London? Venice? Valle de Laine, yeah. I know, it's a bit out in the that's boonies. how you say it. What in the world are you doing out there? You know, business. I've got to see through the takeover of some old family business that's got a few debts. It's a really charming place, but there's one or two weird things going on here. I, I can't go into it now. Oh, well, that's right. Your old mother's too dumb to understand it. You really do take after your father sometimes. Mother. Kate, you'll never guess who I saw yesterday. Ma, I haven't this got is, a lot of time, you know. like a real conversation Frank. with your mother. This is amazing. Ma, please, I've got to go. Frank! Frank Malkovich, the Russian opera singer. Well, maybe you don't remember him. He was quite a star in his day. Listen, Ma, I really don't have the time. I'll call you back. Looks like you're going to have a new he daddy. as charming as he always was. We spent the... Mom, I really have to go. I'll call you back. I promise. Lots of love. Kate! Now, I do vaguely remember. I think that's going to be important later. Her fiancé, boyfriend, probably not, though. Oh, hey, it's the thing from outside. <sighs> That's really heavy. I've got to get some help. Maybe this thing. I wonder what this even is. Well, that's the thing. Does it really count as solving the puzzle if I've got no idea what's going on? I'm gonna check something real quick. I'm gonna pause it for a second. Interesting. Just checking to see my Steam friends who's online. So everyone is away who's online. strange because sometimes it glows when there's something and sometimes it doesn't and sometimes it glows in a place where it shouldn't oh hey that one glows and that one glows so I guess that would be the same place I just was I don't think the water noise was this loud last time. Doesn't look like that works. Or maybe not.
I'm concerned. I think I need to build Oscar now, but her letter said it would take some time because of the, you know, delicate handiwork it entails. Doesn't look like that works. One of these things is not like the other. Doesn't look like that works. Doesn't look like that works. Doesn't look like that works. So something's going on in bay number three? If I double click, then she runs.
because the perspective changes so drastically. I'm only like two and a half hours in this game, but you know, I learned how to run, so I see that as a win. Go faster, Kate. Or does the stairs? Oh, hey, yeah, that did work. Sweet. again doesn't look like that works doesn't look like that works okay doesn't look like that works why why does that not work doesn't look like that works somewhat vested by this, you know, 15 year old video game. Okay, um, time to cheat a little bit. Okay, um, I, I am so ashamed. I'm so ashamed that I have to do this. Uh oh, he posted two hours ago that there's no video. That's not good. I wonder if he came during the break. No, because that the break was not two hours ago. Um sorry, that's so rude of me. I was reading comments on my Facebook from where I talked about fact that I was streaming. Full walkthrough. Uh, I'm so... Oh, this full walkthrough is not actually the, an actual walkthrough. It's just how to do things. Other helpful guides. No, this isn't even a helpful guide. Shame. Dang. Okay, um, well, Google is my friend. Siberia with a Y. Walk through. I am so, so ashamed. So ashamed. Pick up the key. Da, 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 da. Okay. 
I've gone through that. I got that. I got the key. We're gonna go to her mansion, get the ink, get her diary, chasing the mammoth, broken lever, tiny mammoth doll, the factory. Here we go. Uh, the platform is okay. I've already got the canister into the factory. Go to the courtyard, go to the factory. You'll see a new train design, an unfinished letter written to Hans, outstanding. The mute. Mechanical toy and a musical cylinder. I got that. Go to the right up to the door. Let's screen this take you to a room where you can turn on the water wheel. Yes, I did that. Run all the way up to the right. You see a platform with a canister. You'll receive a call from your mother. Forklift. Okay, take a look at the forklift and turn the crank. Set into action. Take the canister out to the factory production line. Walk through the door to the top and you'll see an odd automaton hanging above a bench. Walk around the back and wind the crank to lower him to the bench. Walk around the back and wind the crank to lower him to the bench. Walk through the door. Walk through the door to the top and you'll see a tomaton hanging above the bench. Take a look at the forklift and turn the crank to send to action factory pressure. You'll see a tomaton hanging above the bench. Oh, I haven't found the workshop. That's my problem. Walk through the door at the top. Okay, okay. It looks like I missed a room. I just want to finish this town. If I can't finish this town, I will finish this town. This is not horrifying at all. There's just a man suspended by meat hooks. Okay. Okay, so what can I do? He's moving. just hanging out. My goodness, this family. Oh, many thanks indeed. I am most embarrassed for you to see me like this. I lack a certain completion. You see, nobody here found the time to polish off the finishing touches. Honestly, these days, we really have lost the art of good workmanship. Uh... Yeah, Look maybe. At her. With whom do I have the honor of speaking? Could you please state your identity, articulating clearly? My name is Kate. Kate Walker. Allow me to introduce myself. I am model XZ2000. My common name is Oscar. I represent the technological zenith of this factory's production. I have been designed to drive a locomotive. A touch messy, but an essential task. Have you logged my first and last name? Perfectly. Kate Walker. Pleased to meet you. Me too, uh, Model XZ2000. Please, all my friends call me Oscar. 
This fad for cryptic names is such a bore. Could you imagine being called by your passport number? I suppose not, Mr. Oscar. Sir. Passport? What's Do you that? know where I could find the factory paperwork? I cannot reply to this question with precision. Try Anna Vorlberg's office above the machine floor. Oh, about that. Um... When you are complete and totally functional, can you help me gather information about Hans Vorlberg? I'm afraid I can't, Kate Walker. Duty calls. Once I've recovered my feet, I have to see to my post on the train. It's waiting for its engineer. about the uh, English language. Like, this is a foreign language that she's speaking to someone else, but without an accent, because she's American. She has got an American accent. Does the name Hans Vorlberg mean something to you? Not of course, he created me. But I am sorry to say that I am yet to meet my maker. Have you any idea where he might be right now? Well, let me no, you Kate Walker, but I am sure I would experience great metaphysical satisfaction in his presence. That's a you said you were a train engineer? What train would that be? But, Kate Walker, you have not seen the magnificent train waiting at the station? See, and where is that train going, Mr. Oscar? The train is going far away. Very, very far away indeed. Are you taking any passengers? My duty is to drive the train. Above all, to avoid delays. An engineer prides himself on punctuality. I will agree with you, though, Kate Walker. That a train without passengers is hardly a train at all. You haven't answered my question. For further details, please consult Anna Vorlberg. About Anna. Has it been a long time since you last saw Anna Vorlberg? 72 hours, 32 minutes, and 20 seconds, to be precise. This regrettable absence explains the delay in my production process. Anna Vorlberg is dead, Mr. Oscar. What do you mean by the notion of death, Kate Walker? Broken. Disactivated. Worn out. Damaged. Unplugged. Oh, that really is most bothersome. I'd rather count it on finishing my production. Can I be of use to you? Why, you certainly can. I absolutely must have my feet. My hands are model XZ-2003. My feet our model XZ-2005 underscore B. Be careful. The model XZ-2005 underscore A has evidenced some rather embarrassing performance failures. Like bugs? Automatons do not have bugs, Kate Walker. They simply display functional idiosyncrasies. I'm sorry, I didn't know. What do I have to do to get you a pair of feet? Use the assembly line to construct them. You will need a production punch card on which is recorded my body design data. Here is my own punch card. Okay, I'll give it a go. Thank you, Kate Walker. You are a very strange robot. <gasps> Automaton, if you please. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. Automatons have an additional soul auxiliary, you understand? Uh, I think so. I don't. What do you mean, soul auxiliary? As bizarre as it may seem, I have the impression you are the only person who can help me. I very much doubt it, Kate Walker. Why do you say that? What good am I without appendices, I ask you? Oscar, I am delighted to have met you. See you again soon, I hope. Amputees yes, Kate are Walker. This game.
look, I'm still the only person watching this. I like that much. It's dangerous whenever I hear like a reflective day. Okay, I'm cheating just a little bit because I did just have that thing open again. human legs. collected two human feet. Here are your feet, Oscar. I hope I haven't made a mistake. These feet are incorrect, Kate Walker. I get her to run by not just switching out the lift circle. But sometimes double switching on the lift circle will make her run. It 
doesn't even tell me what model. It doesn't tell me if I made A, B, C, D, E, F, or G. <sighs> These amputee like come. Although, I kind of don't want to give him legs. I kind of want to give him like, a wheelchair so I can teach him that he can still be very useful and very valuable. I feel like there's a lesson for him to learn. Here are your feet, Oscar. I hope I haven't made a mistake. These feet are incorrect, Kate Walker. Okay, so it said... Look at the brochure for an idea of what color the leg should be. It looks like shiny silver. So maybe it's supposed to be the dark one. Okay, I'm changing my goals. I, I just want to make him legs. That is my goal in life is to make him legs. I just I just wish it worked faster to get all the way up there. I have to get the right pair of legs. Okay, so my knowledge of ebony means black. This is the darkest color I have to choose from. I wouldn't even say this thing takes up half the screen. Really, this is like a quarter of my screen. Just to say. I wish you said it with like a little bit more snark each time. Here are your feet, Oscar. I hope I, I haven't made, made a, mistake. a mistake. These feet are incorrect, Kate Walker. Okay, what does this say? See what color legs should be. It's the ebony sample on the page to showing you the color used for the It's the light color. 
It's the light color. I thought ebony meant black. I, so I thought ebony would mean the darker one. Beautiful, realistic, 3D environment. Hours of time. Nice, white, sandy color. Nice, light, sandy color. <gasps> it looks different this time. I think I made the correct beat. I will give these to Oscar. The grouch. The late grouch. And then we'll go right back. Here are your feet, Oscar. I hope they fit. Hope Kate they fit. Walker, I see you managed to produce two XZ2005 underscore B models. How did she conceal that under her jacket? Because her jacket wasn't lumpy or anything. They should have just given her a bag of holding. Nothing disturbing about this image at all, guys. Cool beans. If I only had to see. Allow me to express a real feeling of joy, Kate Walker. They really suit you. Comfy? Very. You are very kind, Kate Walker. I am sorry to have to leave you. Where are you going? I must find my train. Its departure is imminent. Okay, well it is 1.52 in the morning. I think I'm gonna maybe go to bed before 3 a.m. tonight. I don't know, it sounds crazy, but maybe I'll do that. I don't know, we'll find out. Okay.
night guys or should I say good morning guys